Hello people of the tubes, welcome to GameSquid and welcome Geeky Classes TV. You're you're back from your from your huge endeavor where you made a whole movie and Yeah. Significant absence, uh, I think is the way to put it. Um yeah, but uh well I'm actually still working on it, believe it or not, because like while I do have a finished film, um it's like forty minutes long. And it's been shown at um, like different cinemas already. Uh, it's it's a finished film, but for me, it's not the finished film. So like, there's still stuff I'm like, oh, I could maybe change the color grade on that. Uh, I could maybe do a re-edit on that. So I'm sort of experimenting oh, no. with it. It's it's one of those things. It's like you'll know yourself from creating things. You all you don't really finish making stuff. You just eventually hit a point where it's like okay i'm fucking with this so much now like it might as well just go out you yeah. know what i mean they don't really have an early access for movies though so i don't know no if you, they don't <laughs> if you've got any way to improve there well that's what the early screenings were for i suppose that was my equivalent of early access got some feedback and stuff and like kind of took on some criticisms so like for example like one of the things i'm doing is um <laughs> you'll probably uh, be gutted about this but don't worry i don't think it'll not affect their the version you see <laughs> i'm actually doing a bit uh, a version without swearing in it because that one oh, of the no. criti- one of the criticisms i got was there was too much swearing in it and uh it could be sort of holy shit let me use my ability to edit this podcast here for a second because at the time i didn't react to what he said there but i guess that's pretty crazy he's taking out the swear words imagine that because geeky glasses he's normally like, one of the few remaining YouTube channels that swear, if you go on, like, PewDiePie or, uh, like, any of the big ones, they, they all just blur out, they all beep out the, the swear words, and it's fucking lame. And now he's gonna do it too. Imagine that. Well, what can I say? I guess if it if it gives him a better audience, but at least there's gonna be an uncensored version, so that's good. Well, back to the podcast, I guess. <laughs> Uh, with to the right audience it could be like a great like kid show which i'm fine with like i love kid shows you know one of my favorite shows is gravity falls um which was a heavy Ooh, i love influence. that one yeah it's fantastic um so i'm doing like two vi- like i'm i'm re-editing stuff so that you can take out swearing where like you don't see characters mouths and stuff and i'm just gonna get them re redub dialogue but then I'm actually uh, reshooting a couple of little small tiny scenes in um, the park. Like when I get back from America uh, at the end of March, I'm, I'm going to America again for two weeks to see my girlfriend, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna reshoot just some versions where the kids don't swear. Uh, but it's been fun. It's been a great experience. Uh, I think uh, meeting like complete strangers. But, you know, driving them to all ends of the country and even another country, you know, crossing the border into Scotland for some of this stuff and uh, just staying up till ridiculous hours making a movie has been a hell of a lot of fun. Oh, that's crazy. And still back to bragging with your girlfriend, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I do, I do like to mention her because i like her a lot but oh, that's that's of it's, it's it's not it's not it's not a brag it's not a brag <laughs> humble brag bro <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a humble brag a little bit of a humble brag. so when's it coming out on youtube or wherever you're gonna release it online um do you see that's a i don't actually know is the oh, problem no. so i know it's right it's never so my, coming to youtube oh no well i want to bring it out on youtube right but my issue is that I want to put it into a couple of film festivals. So I've just found out, for example, it's it's actually it's it's in a film festival right now. It got it got. Um, I'm waiting on the Laurels, which is why I haven't announced it. So you're sort of the first person to hear about this, actually. Um, but I got actually got put into Newcastle International Film Festival on the uh, early screening build. Uh, I got the official selection. I'm just waiting on them to send us the Laurels, and then I was going to put that out, and that's sort of like its first film festival release. Uh, the thing is, if I have t- too many public screenings, um, and YouTube would would count as as a potential, you know, infinite public screening. I'm I'm not sure I like the logistics of it. Um, I might actually disqualify myself from certain film festivals, which could potentially limit. Uh, some of like the audience that sees it who might be able to kind of take it as an idea further 
So I'm sort of like being very careful in my release because if it was up to me and it wasn't, and I didn't, I, I literally knew I couldn't take it any further than this. I, I'd release the version I have this afternoon on YouTube. Um, but I can't do that without potentially, you know, hindering myself. Um, oh, so no. the, I, they they yes. all wanted to, they all want to see it before it was cool, huh? Thought we yeah, all were terrible bunch hipsters, of hipsters about it. Jesus, <laughs> uh, these film festivals are, are real hipsters. Like there is genuinely like some film festivals oh, are like you can't. Honestly, I'm not even joking. Like the certain film festivals, I won't even be entering in these ones. There's certain film festivals that have this condition where it's like if you screen it at our film festival, it can't have been screened anywhere else in the world. <laughs> oh, and it's wow. Like, Wow, like, why would anybody enter that then? You just limit yourself to, like, one single film festival. It's so dumb. Like, why even have that rule? Like, surely if you're, like, you know, you're a place that's supposed to, prom- you know, promote the arts, you'd want to show off as much art as you can, like, get it, as many people seeing it. But, I don't know, I guess it's a little bit of... Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird industry. Anyway, so... Yeah, so that's the only reason it's not on YouTube at the moment. So my current plan is, I would say, I'm reshooting this these bits in March, end of March, early April. Then I'm going to re- stick those new bits in the current edit, maybe rejig the, and edit, the edit I've currently got and tighten it up a little bit because uh, I keep I keep shortening it. It's, 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 um, it's too long. It's got too much. Well, it's not too long. It's only 40 minutes. I, I thought too... you were going to make it longer, and then you say you're going to make it even shorter. Yeah. Imagine that. It's yeah, like, it's, well, one day it's... I'll just get half an hour of it. Yeah. No, I, I, think it'll, <laughs> I think the lowest it'll probably get is 35 minutes, but I do think it'll that be That is around... pretty close. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it'll be closer to 40, if I'm, if I'm completely <laughs> honest, because it's, it's 42 at the moment. But it was 45, and then I took three minutes out, which sounds like nothing. But in film terms, that's loads. Like, cutting out three minutes was really hard. Um, yeah, and just in the film, it, everything is, is has so much effort put into it. So really yeah, that, exactly. It's very condensed, but I guess it's hard to tell if it, if it gets better or worse if you take stuff out. I, I mean, I guess, assumingly, it would get better, but... Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. That's that's part of the experimenting process. So the stuff I've taken out, and then I've went, ah, oh, shit, that doesn't work taken out, and I've ended up having to put it back in. But then there's other stuff I've taken out and went, this scene's a lot snappier now, it's a lot less boring. So, for example, um, uh, there's a scene right at the start where the two kids are talking to, a head te- to their head teacher, and they get lectured by their head teacher. And it's not, in, like, in the script, it reads fine because it's just, you know, two pages, which doesn't seem like a lot. But when yeah, what when I was watching the original cut, it felt like it went on for an eternity, like. And then I realized like, well, I could get away with that line if I if I if I change where that line's placed, this conversation still makes sense. And I shortened it by like. So, 40 so did you seconds. shuffle it around then? Did you yeah, take yeah. the existing footage and change it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I do that. Uh, I've done that quite a lot. So like, there'll yeah, be like that's, little, little. That's the kind of stuff they really were on on George Lucas about because he yeah. he changed like a lot of the pr- original performances of the actors and then people were like, oh my god, he's taking the humanity out of it. It's yeah. it's all crazy editing. What's he? What's his yeah. business censoring these actors? Oh god. <laughs> well, you can change so much. So with just like changing the order of a scene. So like for example, right. Um, there's a bit where the two kids um, see the monster and then it like cuts to their reaction. The scene plays out differently depending on whose reaction I cut to. If I cut to both of them, it, I, I've then the thing that follows has to be a shot of the vampire because then next time when I cut on the close-ups of them, it's not the same shot as the shot of both of them. But I worked out I could shorten the scene if I cut to one of them and then cut to the other guy because you don't see what the other guy's doing. So when it cuts to him, it still makes sense. It's 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 really, it's it's impossible to explain without visuals. Really, I want to do um, a whole, uh, like a behind the scenes kind of like editing decisions thing, where I'll show the scenes as they were before people like before they made the final version, and explain like why I took things out and why I changed things. I think it could make a good YouTube series, actually, and, and definitely it'd be something to put on the Blu-ray extras and stuff. You could make more YouTube material under the entire runtime of your short film. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> but th there's so much to it anyways. You could, like, how much silence is there between each transition? Like, how, how long do you oh, yeah. d do you stay on the, the shock? And how long are you going to show the vampire? And, like, literally everything has so much, so many possible options. But I guess yeah. only very few options that are actually, uh, like, perfect. So you... Mm -hmm. I mean, there's probably only going to be a few choices that really make the the ultimate sense, but yeah, still definitely a lot of ways that you could do it. Yeah, I mean, there's a thing you can do um, to just sort of prove like the power of editing. Like people have done it before, where they've like filmed a sequence off a script, then gave it to two different editors, and those two editors have come back with like almost completely different films, and both of them work. You know what I mean? What's it's, that it's, movie called? Oh, they, they do it all the time. It's it's not a movie. Brilliant. It's like a, it's like a fairly uh, regular practice. Is that like Ants and the Bucks Life, eh? Yeah, maybe not with animation. <laughs> <laughs> Animation's a little tricky. Yeah, to just hey, you go make half a movie. You go make half a movie. You know, like bloody characters like change in color because of like the editor's <laughs> and stuff. That'd be Perfect. crazy. Yeah. Oh man. So, how how was the the reviews? Uh, I mean, the the first reaction of the audience. Did they all did they all love it? Yeah, uh, seem it right. I'm I'm gonna say <laughs> putting you on the is, spot there. Sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna say that the reaction was very positive, and people seemed very positive about it. But um, I don't know what you're like, but I have like this mad case of like imposter syndrome. Where like I just I feel like because I still this is why I'm still working. Well, you I, I can't, feel like you it's... can't listen to any of that. There's always yeah. gonna be more perfectionism that you could put into it, and there's always you could always feel like you're not doing good enough of a job. But then you don't keep in mind that the audience they're just gonna see it once, and it's half an hour. It's it's not gonna mean nearly as much to them as it will to you. So it, it just needs to. It doesn't need to be a masterpiece to them. If it's just good, it'll be good. And then they, they know that yeah. it's made by an indie mm -hmm. indie movie creator and they, they're going to love it all the more because it's just you and your, your circle of friends. And you yeah. didn't even... Re your Kickstarter was like a thousand pounds, right? Yeah, well, the funny thing is... is, is um, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty good. I, they, they're going to love it. Yeah, there's, there's the funny thing is with a Kickstarter, actually, that was really scary um again yeah this is you're the first person i've sort of spoke to about this outside of um you know like literally get, people get are, the like, inside scoop them. oh right you are you're getting the inside <laughs> scoop uh yes. the kickstarter was fucking terrifying and i almost cancelled it uh because what happened was i had saved up a lot of money by myself um wanting to make this film and then i found myself in a position where if I went to, I got off at a place at university um, to do a master's course, and they were going to pay for it. Um, for like they were gonna, normally over here, uh, you have to pay for your own master's course, and it's like ten grand. Um, whereas I got offered the like contact the previous students who'd done well at undergraduate, and said, "Hey, do you want to do this this master's course? Um, it'll be free for you. Like we've got some funding." And uh, you can take it on a loans basis rather than having to pay the entire thing up front yourself. Now, I wasn't going to do the master's course at all. Like, I couldn't have cared less about um, going back to uni effectively. But one thing the uni did have is access to lots of awesome camera equipment that I'd been pricing to rent. So I'd been saving up money with the intent to rent camera equipment. And I was like, I was only like maybe a quarter of the way there for what I wanted because realistically what I wanted to do would have cost us around 20,000 um, when you consider all the equipment rental costs um, and I'd raised about four I, I, I can't remember the exact numbers I've got it all written down somewhere I, I'd raised about four or five thousand pounds by myself and I worked out like once I get the uni resources and can pull a crew from the uni that I would actually be able to make the film for six thousand and I was like, well, I'm only a thousand off that. So I asked for a thousand on Kickstarter because that made sense. Because I was like, well, I'll just put all the money I've saved so far. This is an opportunity that's going to make us give us an uh, opportunity to make the film a lot cheaper. I'll sign up for the masters basically as an excuse to get the equipment. 
um because you've got to take every opportunity you can get you know it's, it's not there's no like i know it's probably a little bit somewhat dubious to you know sign up to a university course to get access to that gear but it's if, if you if it helps you make the film it's it's the kind of things you have to do anything that helps you but um, you were taking the course as well and learning, oh yeah right? yeah yeah I've, I've oh yeah i've done i've finished the course now i've, I've done the whole thing um well, like that's I the point I, of the course anyways is to make you into someone who makes movies so i don't see true. i don't yeah. see the problem with that yeah i think it's just some would um argue I, I I agree with you. I agree with you, but I think some would argue like, well, maybe that position could have gone to somebody who just wanted to do the masters rather than you. And I was, but I would argue it's like, yeah, but if you want to do the masters and you're not wanting to use it to make a film, then you're probably not in the masters for the right reasons anyway. Like it's almost a resource to make you like, I feel like if you're doing the master's degree um, and you don't, want to make something professional by the end of it then you're probably in the wrong degree um at least, anyway that's that's besides the point i'm, I'm, I'm getting on tangent there it's so yes yeah, so imposter syndrome going all over the place and i'm, I'm yeah. sure no one would possibly think that oh my god you're you're not a real student get out of here how, yeah. how dare you go there be, become a student just so you could make a movie and you know how many people go into university just to wash out and no one blames yeah. them so why would they blame you if you actually succeed and, and not just that you even make your own thing and it, it gets great maybe <laughs> probably hopefully, hopefully <laughs> people enjoy it uh, but yeah so so what happened and this is where it got really scary is i launched the kickstarter and bear in mind, I was working at the same time. So I was at university and I also had a full-time job that had just let us go onto a part-time contract as a, as like a, an educational kind of like animator, an educational like app developer. I'd, I'd make like little e-learning stuff for different companies and classrooms and stuff to give to, you know, students. Um, and they use the apps as like an educational resource. And that was, that was my job. Um, and what happened was... The night I launched the Kickstarter, the Kickstarter got 1,000 straight away. And I thought, fuck, this is amazing. I was on cloud nine. I was over the moon. And then I was like, that totals my money up to like 6,000 pounds. You know, I've saved 5,000 myself, 1,000 from the Kickstarter, and it's still going. And then I'm looking, and I'm like, and then now I've got the equipment and the crew. I can totally make this. And like, before it was going to cost us like 20 grand. And now, because of the kindness of like strangers on the internet, just giving us 1,000 pounds and, and me getting that master's opportunity, I was like, shit, I can, I can do this much earlier than I anticipated. And like, I was over the moon. The next day, I go into work, and without any prior warning, I get sacked. I'm comp- I'm fired from the company. Oh damn! Um, I did not see that one coming. I thought yeah. you're gonna you're gonna say something along the line as you're gonna uh, the Kickstarter money is getting too much and you can't justify spending it all. But now this is a whole different twist. No, oh my god! No, no. So <laughs> so I'm sat there thinking, shit, I don't have an income now. I don't, I don't know what to do. So I'm looking and I put up this Kickstarter money for 1,000 because in my head, I knew I only needed 1,000 more. Now I'm looking at my personal finances, which was based on me still having an income to live off. And I'm like, shit, I need to use that personal finances to live. So I can't afford to make the film. So I was like, shit, what do I do? Do I, do I cancel the Kickstarter? Do I explain? Do I... See if it if it oh goes God. and like reimburses, and then luckily, obviously, I let the like. It, it I, got I, really I, high, right? Yeah, it it made the five thousand, and so I was able to make the film with a couple of compra- compromises. Um, wow, but, that was close one. I didn't even realize. I thought you were just this this perfect beacon of success, but I guess you just <laughs> barely no. scraped by. No, I barely, barely scraped by. I appreciate that you saw us as the beacon of success, though. I must give off some <laughs> false impressions. But yeah, so if I think if it hadn't have been as successful as it was, I think once it got to about £3,000, I thought it was all right. I was like, I can maybe take, I can probably still take a couple of freelance jobs. I did manage to take a couple of freelance jobs during the Kickstarter, which made us feel a bit more secure because I was like, well, if I use this as an income, I can still sort of use the Kickstarter money. Because ultimately what I didn't want to do was like, it wouldn't have been fair for, uh, I didn't want to take a wage from the Kickstarter money 
because simply because I hadn't said I would. If it was spelt out in the description, if I'd said, look, this Kickstarter is going to help fund the film, but also it's going to be my living cost while I make the film, then fair enough. But I'd not I'd not said that I was going to. So I didn't want to do that because that feels almost fraudulent. Like that felt morally wrong to me. So Damn. I think if it hadn't have got over the 3000 mark by the end, I was going to like what I got advised to do because I was talking to like me lecturers and like friends and that. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like I've been sacked. I don't have the money now. The Kickstarter succeeded. People are excited for it. And uh, the advertis- the, what I got um, sort of advised to do was like, well, why don't you see what it's like sort of at, towards the back end of the Kickstarter? And luckily, it like it raised enough because I think if it hadn't raised over like three thousand, um, I would have had to like cancel it in the last week, and sort of make a statement telling people like, yeah, I'd initially put this Kickstarter up on the basis that I had a job that could support us, but now I've lost my job, and like that would have been like you know really embarrassing and really kind of like sad and disappointing. So I'm I'm glad it didn't go that way. Um, and then there was like obviously as as there always is with these things there was like a million problems were encountered during shooting a million problems were encountered during like uh, the pre-production process it, it's it, it's all stuff that you expect anyway it's it's stuff that is part and parcel of it but it's it's been an uphill battle like and uh, losing my job was was a really really scary one um, so now my problem is I have made the film but because I didn't have an income to support as while well, I was making the film. Um, apart from the odd freelance job here and there, I am painfully poor. I am so skint. The actual reason Damn. why there wasn't... Um, like, I've just, just, just got paid today because I'm self-employed and I'm working at uh, an office. That's a whole other story. I'm actually working with the people who also got laid off with us at the same time when when all the work just kind of like laid off um, wow, what, what kind of work is that if you don't mind me asking uh we're doing like media stuff so i do like uh edits for um people for like companies making them like advertisements and commercials that we've got a website actually if you were interested and um, we do like educational apps and animations sure, I'll, I'll put it in the description sure <laughs> yeah think thinkbiscuit.com um so yeah so so I'm I'm currently earning again. I'm back into work, but only because I've just kind of got off the August Club and found time to it. But I'm currently like crawling back up because like I've had to, um, in this past month, I've had to like lend money off people just to pay rent. And uh, like Amy's paying for me to go over to America um, in March. So like I owe her the like some of the plane ticket money. Um, so like I, it's it's I, although I am getting paid again, it's like as soon as I'm getting it, I'm having to pay back people who've like helped us out to, you know, just so I could make rent and stuff while I made the August Club, which I'm incredibly grateful for those people. But like, yeah, <laughs> they just it's just sort of, sort of like a big crawl back up now. Um, so I and, and actually, um, you know how I did like the Last Jedi review, and then yep. that was I a didn't... good a good review, I guess. I, yeah. I actually. Agree with you there for once. <laughs> hey, that's good. That's good. Because we very rarely do. I do like, I do like, I must say, I do like that you stay a fan of my channel even though you disagree with us like 90% of the time. That's A, a fan that's... of your channel. We're personal friends. What are you yeah, talking exactly. about? Oh, 100%. But I, I, like, I like that you initially started as a fan of my channel. Um, well, it's it's all the, the editing, really. I, I, I like all the, the way you edit it and then it's all very coherent and... It, it must be so much effort in making each one of these single videos. It's it's pretty great, and I I agree with like half of your movie yeah. reviews. But then you really good thing you didn't make that emoji movie review because <laughs> that would have surely been terrible for me. Yeah, it would have been a hard a hard sell to you. Um, <laughs> but I uh, so yeah, what happened actually was the reason I did a Last Jedi review as me comeback was because I actually saw that while I was in America with Amy. And then I, I was wanting to come back onto the review, but I did it a bit preemptively because I did the Last Jedi review and was all like, hey guys, I'm totally back now, and then didn't upload again for another two weeks. And the actual reason for that was I literally didn't have enough money to go to the cinema, so I couldn't see <laughs> So I couldn't see anything. So I was if like, only Shit. there was some, some highly convenient piracy online that you could yeah, have used. That, that's, that's true. That's true. Well... I feel like I can't justifiably, you know, rev- I feel like I can't fairly review a film. Oh, when it's no. like, you know, potato cam. 
Well, like, you could bangers. review something that's old, but yeah, it makes sense. Uh, in, obviously, in, piracy is evil, and you should all feel ashamed, <laughs> you pirates. In, in retrospect, in retrospect, I should have filled the gap with reviewing stuff that was old. But at the time, I was just so dead set on like playing catch up, and then other things like that I had seen, like I saw the Justice League and that. But like it had been so long since I'd seen it and hadn't wrote reviews, so I didn't really think I could do, be fair about it. Um, but yeah, so so that's the story of of the 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 struggle um i'm i'm finally sort of like in a comfortable place where i can sort of comfortably and quite casually work on the august club is starting to get into film festivals and i'm starting to earn money again but yeah there was a bit of a very uh you know tight moment towards the start and then towards the back end where i was like the, the, the first problem was, of course, getting enough money to make the film. And then the last the problem after making the film was, shit, I've spent all of the Kickstarter money and all of my own money making the film. And now I don't have money to live on. But uh, we're getting there now. It's pulling through. Worth it in the end, I hope. Oh, that's also insane. You're such a poor, starving artist. <laughs> and to think. Well, why, I, I, I've been asking you this entire time. Why don't you make a Patreon? <laughs> it would solve all of your problems. Do you know what, dude? Do you know what? I'm fine. I am finally going to take your advice. I think I'm going to do it. So yeah. you, you already know that it works because you already made a Kickstarter. So you know there's people that are just, they, they just got their, their overbursting wallets and they, they really want to, <laughs> to give you that money, but they, they, there's no way they can give it to you. <laughs> so. I am going my own i am going to make one this year the only condition i have um, this year how about this, year? this month right 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 right, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain why i'll explain why right i am yet technically although the film's finished and i do have like a, a, a film and like i'm still working on it there's lots of people and i'm very very grateful to those people for backing us on kickstarter but i'm yet to deliver on that and i don't want to ask them bef- for more before they've gotten that so my plan is I'll do the launch the August Club and then I'll set up the Patreon. And well, I think I guess, that's, I guess it makes sense, but yeah, also it's it's like basically a different thing and you're already making the videos, so you should already like get paid for the videos. It wouldn't yeah. make any sense not it, to. Well, it it would be a particular help now, especially because this YouTube demonetization thing is killing me. Besides I mean, this isn't like Kickstarter anyways, they don't they don't like get rewards basically their, their reward is that you keep making videos even though yeah. you can't set up rewards but you don't have to and if you do set up rewards they're gonna be they're like extra little videos that you could make but the, the main thing is that it's it's just donations the the patreon so really it, it should be the the perfect model for you but then again yeah. who, who knows I've, I've told people to get patreon and then they had like zero patrons and then it can happen. other people I, I i wonder if you're gonna if you're gonna be successful you should really have done this already so you would know i know, I know. I should, you, you were you were totally right when you were telling <laughs> us to do it years ago like i should have i should have definitely done it um but <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I, I I think it's the imposter Too syndrome thing proud. as well. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Oh, well, actually, it that's the opposite of proud. Hmm. Yeah, I but no, I, I think I think it's the imposter syndrome thing. I think it was I didn't want to launch a Patreon because I personally don't think my content is good enough to pay for, um, and I didn't feel comfortable asking. And I know it's it's entirely optional. And if I had have done it, I would have made a clear, clear, defined mention of like, look, guys, this is entirely optional don't have to give us anything if you don't want but it's it's i think the, what the i've got thing over- is that it's it's not even that because i think most of the kickstarter money you probably just got because people liked your videos they probably didn't i don't even know if they really cared about your your movie they probably just wanted to give you personally money but i think i, mean, I might, I might be thankful. wrong uh, well actually my kickstarter was quite interesting in that it's um in the minority statistics of kickstarters um, so before What's I launched that? the Kickstarter, I did like a million like different bits of research. Now I may get some of these statistics wrong off the top of my head, but it sort of worked out a little bit like it sort of works out a little bit like this. So apparently, eighty percent of all Kickstarters fail, which I can totally believe. That makes total sense to us. But then, of the twenty oh, percent that succeed, and I, again, I might get be getting these numbers wrong, but it's roughly around this kind of level. Of the twenty percent that succeed. 80% of those are funded by friends and family. 
uh, with like the majority of of the bulk of the money coming from friends and family. Yeah, but the thing is that you obviously have a YouTube channel with twenty k yeah. subscribers, and yeah, you yeah, made yeah. made it prominent in your videos. You made one review every week, uh, every day every of the day, week. Every day, yeah. And and then um, at the end, it was like, oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna be just like the guy who made the room. I'm gonna put <laughs> all of my passion to yeah. this movie, and you, sh you should go and just look at my Kickstarter. Ah, uh, I've got to tell you that ten reviews in a row was <laughs> exhausting. Because that was things, pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> well, those things legitimately take about eight hours to do because you have to watch the film. Well, that's not so bad. I, I saw it took like twenty hours. Uh, I, I, it used to. <laughs> it used to. Ah, got, I know it. I've gotten quite efficient. I've gotten quite efficient. Yeah, that's um, good. See, you so, could be doing this like all the time. And you could well, make, if I had a Patreon, I could. So that's yeah, you, you could. You could really make like literally every movie. It'd be, it'd be great. That would be ideal. I would love to do that. But yeah, anyway, um, I but it was, I was doing the doing the one a day. Um, that were taken between like eight to ten hours, um, not including travel time to the cinema and back. So what I was doing like. I was sort of like optimizing me time like I'd had like a plan so I was like on the first day I'd go and see two films and then only review one but then it meant that I could uh, do the second film without like on the the next day and have more time to do it because I'd already seen it the day before and didn't have to incorporate travel time into my schedule like back and forth to the cinema and gaps between yeah uh, it, it was intense um but yeah um I do yeah I, I did I did what was yeah so the so my what I was going to say about the Kickstarter was my Kickstarter is interesting because the bulk of my money comes from strangers. So it's already in the minority in that it succeeded. It's again in the minority in that it succeeded like nearly five times what it what it was its asking price. And it's again in a bigger minority in that it succeeded mostly off the back of um, strangers uh, input such as YouTube as and all that but what I found was really weird is you can get a um, Kickstarter breakdown there was actually a significant amount like a significant chunk came from people browsing Kickstarter which I thought was very oh, wow. very very weird like I did not expect that at all the well I'm sure the there's actually a lot of people that do that because yeah. when you go to I mean, there's a lot of people that have Kickstarters, and then the audiences go to the Kickstarters, and then they see either this is great, and oh god, Kickstarter, what a what a site I can promote all these artists, or they they think, ah, oh, this is a terrible project, I'll find something better on here. Yeah. So basically, the site itself makes some 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 kind of a flow flow of income, I guess, or a flow of attention that. Yeah. translates into income which is normal but all, so all you need to do i guess is have a, a a kickstarter that looks really good when you just look at it on the mm -hmm. face of it and then yeah. then you need some initial exposure i guess so that kickstarter takes note of it because if it doesn't get any exposure i would assume that kickstarter is also not going to promote it but you had both of those things i guess so you did pretty well yeah, I was, I was, I was very fortunate, and I'm, you know, again, like really, because I, when I'd launched it, um, I was worried that I might not make the one thousand, and then the fact that I made nearly five times that much was like, oh, okay, I did not see this coming. It's a viral um, Kickstarter, yeah. hooray! Slightly, yeah. I mean, not in the grand scheme of things, of course, but like still, like far better than I ever expected. Um, but yeah. So I just, I just thought I, 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 total tangent I know, but I just thought that was really interesting that there was actually a surprising number. Well, this is fine. About. This is now the podcast about the inside scoop about your movie. So it's all <laughs> yeah. it's all very much re related. I hope you're still gonna have time to do the podcast about talking about Black Panther later. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so you should ch check that other video where we talk about Black Panther right after this one. But let's <laughs> let's keep stay on this topic. So. Patreon, I would assume, would work pretty much the same way as Kickstarter. You got all kinds of artists that you can browse on there. I, I found some people on Patreon that I then patroned on there, but then that was a while ago, and then I decided to to cancel that because it was just taking away money and I wasn't seeing yeah. anything in return, which obviously is that way. But I think there's probably a, a lot of people that... That, that just give for a little while and then they stop giving but maybe you'll actually have more luck and they'll they'll stay with you forever i guess it's all very uh, very well, 
one of the things I'm sort of like <laughs> thinking when I set up the Patreon is like I don't even know how to you know how you can do the like per month per video thing oh actually I, I know a lot about these things because yeah. because there's a lot of ways that they can do a Patreon in, in ways that, that are either really good or really bad mm -hmm. I made a video earlier about someone who, who made a really stupid Patreon and <laughs> he was just making these these really bad videos and he he would make it so that he would he specifically told his audience that I'm, he's going to make these videos that nobody cares about if they give him money on Patreon but if they don't give him money then he he's going to make on make the the normal videos that that actually do well on YouTube ah. so, so so you should not be doing it that way i suppose which is possibly somewhat like the movie but then again i'm not sure I, I suppose in your case it's fine because you're actually reviewing movies so it would make sense that your audience would be interested in horror movies but i think primarily your audience would have been interested in your youtube videos if anything so i think that would yeah i i think i'd be hopeful that they would actually be more interested in patreoning you than in kickstarting you but i i guess it remains to be seen i guess it's possible that you could just be a, a runaway success on Patreon right away, and you'll you'll have a, a feedback loop where you get more patrons, and they they make they make you have more audience, and it'll just explode. And also, you can make more videos, which also gives you more audience and more patrons, and it's exponential growth. But who could that would be tell? lovely. <laughs> I know you, don't, you should just do it already. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I say, like I say, I will I will do it, but I I, I just. It's 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 more of like my own personal kind of reading, like, you know, you remember there was that I know I know it's a different thing to Kickstarter. I know you're saying that, but you remember there was that guy. Um, he made a Mighty Number no. Nine. What's he called? It's not Shinji Mikami. Is it Shinji Mikami? I I don't actually know, but yeah, that well, that game was obviously some really bad Kickstarter, but yeah, it actually yeah. got a lot of money, didn't it? Yeah, but one of the things he did as well, which. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought was quite dubious. Is before he even finished Mighty Number no. Nine, he kickstarted another game. Uh, no, he kickstarted an anime, um, and I don't think it made its funding. But people oh yeah, like, I heard about that. <laughs> but people are like, hold the fuck up! Like you, you've already took my money for the first project, and you haven't even finished that. Do you not want to, you know, finish that first before you? Like ask for well, more? Evidently, he didn't want to no, finish exactly. it because it went so badly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't think you can get sued by Kickstarter, but I guess I might be wrong. Oh, uh, There's no, a lot of really bad... You can get sued by customers of Kickstarter. What's that? Oh, like, customers in, of Kickstarter? Like, if someone right. backs you and then you don't deliver... Because the, what you got to realize is like Kickstarter is essentially a legal transaction. It's like running a shop. Yeah, but so, when you get sued, then all you'd have to do, I assume, would be give some of the money back, and probably not even all of it, because... Oh, yeah, I'm sure you can refund people, but, like, obviously, if someone's put in, like, I don't know, 500 quid or whatever, and then you don't have it at the end... <laughs> oh, um, no. Like, then it is a genuine, like, thing for a court case, especially if you haven't, like, delivered them the goods, because it's essentially like buying a product, you know what I mean? Like, when people bought my Kickstarter, they were buying their name in the credits, so if their name isn't in the credits of the film, then technically, even though they only spent like a fiver, it's like it's 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 which you know to some people oh, quite Jesus, a bit of money. That, that, it's it's still like a right to sue you. You've that, that just delivered. that just leads me to the next point. You, you know how these there's pay, there's people who have a YouTube channel and then they have a Patreon where it's like, where they read out every single. Oh my god! Who, like H Bomber guy does. That's the worst. <laughs> it's so bad. I yeah. think he's actually stopping that now. But oh my god! It's. Why would you add all this this garbage to the end of the video just for the just don't have that reward tier. Never have that reward tier. Like I'm fine with credits, but like when it literally takes you two minutes to read them, um, like all you need is a flashcard. You know what I mean? Like it, it's really bad as well for the actual retention rate because the yeah, the more it, it people watch the video, video, the better. Mm -hmm. Unless they're like this in love with his voice and they they'll actually listen to those stupid credits, <laughs> <laughs> who could tell? But yeah, the, I I think the, the the key to Patreon success would be to have some really good rewards, like your kind of exclusive show or something that well yeah where you like comment on on stuff that's not 
available. I, I'm not sure if you'd want to do anything like that, but stuff like that really increases the, the value of that you get from your Patreon. Yeah, well, that's all, ultimately I want to, like... like I feel Avoid like doing if that, I'm asking, right? Yeah, I, I feel like if I'm asking for money um, for something I'm, I'm doing for free anyway, like, it would have to be to be it so that I can do it more. Or, like, I, I would want to feel like you know, people who were backing us actually got something out of it rather than I just release on the same schedule. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like if they're supporting us, like, I should support them back and, like, actually deliver on what they want. Um, well, of course, but it's it's not like you've been delivering constantly, right? So you, you've been away making this movie. So obviously you're going to... If you just make, like, one more video a year, then that would already be worth it, I think. Yeah. Uh, and but that, that's me not, that concern... Then, then, that's I mean, me other sorry. Um that's me other concern with um Patreon though, is that once I sort of commit to that and people are paying me monthly, like what if I need it to do something where like I take a lot of time out and do, you know, the August Club again or like like I say say I do episode two and I need to that, take That's like, really simple actually break. because apparently you could switch back between monthly and per video on, on the fly, so you could just switch oh, it. Oh I did not know that. That's handy to know. I, I, I'm pretty sure someone did it, but like 90% certain you can do it that way, yeah. So that would definitely alleviate all of those fears, unless you're just gonna pump out like 10 videos in that month and then they, they've, they're confused because they they pledged monthly and then it's 10 payments. But yeah, it, yeah. It, this, this Patreon gives you all kinds of tools to be That's very cool. ethical. And this is, this is crazy. This is almost as if I'm promoting Patreon. <laughs> yeah, you do sound like you're getting commissions off them on the side. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not even... <laughs> I'm not even using it that much. It's only been like I only spent like twenty bucks on Patreon in in total. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it would be a good way. I, I guess you could use the the YouTube tool. Actually, they got like subscriptions where you can actually have your 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 actual account linked to it. But it's probably not as good as Patreon. I I guess. Yeah. Because of all the. All the options that Patreon has and but all you, the... I'm always questionable of anything YouTube brings out now because they just seem like completely devoted to making the uh, creator's end of things as dysfunctional as possible in favour oh, of like... Oh, no. In favour of like the more corporate... Like, the, the demonetization thing is ridiculous. Like, I understand that they want to... Pursue. Well, the thing is that there's really nothing they could do about it because they need to have some kind of way so that these people, instead of suing Google, would just have a way to make a a little a little claim and then they wouldn't go any further because they can't just fight a million lawsuits over this stuff. Well, uh, there's lo- It's not just that though. It's there's loads of things like the copyright dispute system is completely broken. Um, I'm like about I get, that, yeah. I get absolutely. A braid with copyright stuff like um, have you seen um your movie sucks before have you have you ever watched him on youtube yeah i watched him yeah did you see he did one on the like copyright system and he showed you like no, uh, it's, it's everyone's it's, favorite pet peeve is the yeah. copyright system i guess for you as a movie reviewer it's particularly bad but well what are you gonna do it's yeah it's really it's, it's frustrating. pretty hard it's really frustrating though because like i'll upload a video which is only using um, you know the trailers that are publicly available anyway I'm not even using clips from the you know a sneaky copy of the film or um, you know the full did blue blu-ray or DVD release and so the this this clips that they're detecting as being like shady on copyright are literally like clips that are on their own website for people to see and it's just because it's this automatic system it just will immediately the, the block is, it worldwide. Like, I've had that before where I've, like, put up on Twitter, hey, everybody, check out this uh, video. And oh then no. someone's commented and went, what video? And I'm like, oh, for God's sake. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is that it's all really necessary because there's a lot of shitty YouTube channels that exclusively re-upload, like, trailers and then oh, yeah, monetize 100%. them and, and add their own stupid ads at the end. And it's, like, really bad. And it's good that they... They're yeah. cranking down on that at oh, least. Oh, yeah, but... 100%. But I do think the detection system could be better. Like, for example, why isn't the uh, algorithm analyzing my video and going, 
well, this is the trailer, but it's also, you know, heavily edited, 10 minutes longer, has multiple cutaways in between, and has none of the sound of the trailer. Like, I purposely make it have none of the sound because I know my, my YouTube mate, um, Film Rant, who also does, like, movie reviews, He actually, he's actually one of the guys working with us in, in the office, funny enough. Um, he uh, has, like a clip from the trailer like unedited to start the review like you'll have like a little like 10 second snippet and then you'll go okay so today we're talking about blah 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 um and he bumps into seemingly more copyright issues than me and i'm not sure if that's because he's a smaller channel or that's because he's you know using that unedited clip but i'm like why isn't it detecting that more like, surely, like, if someone's just re-uploading the trailer, they're going to be re-uploading it with the sound of the trailer. Like, why isn't it checking for sound and video? If you're talking over it, surely that, that alone is fair use, if you're making commentary on it. But whatever, they, uh, it's a pet peeve, and I could, I could do a whole three-hour-long podcast <laughs> oh, on no. that alone. So let's, let's not sit too long on it. Especially because, like, h- hundreds of YouTubers have done it already, and everyone knows yeah, about exactly. it at this point. But then again, it's just... It's just I was never ever really making money from YouTube anyway, um, not really. Um, and now, now it's just like, it's not, it's not the money that I'm bothered about uh, at all. To be honest, it's well, the... you've picked a really bad time to come back as well. Unless you met... actually, I don't remember. Did you come back in December or January? Because uh... December would be the the time to come back, and January would be the time where no one gets any ad revenue ever. Yeah, I think I came back in January. Well, that's that's what oh, I'm saying. No. It, it's not. It's not. I'm not bothered about ad revenue because I was never really making much money on YouTube anyway. Like not not at all really. Um, like I think, uh, like my totals barely scratch, uh, like a thousand dollars once you take into account the because the if you go on the um ads thing but this is this is for five years i've been on youtube five years granted i've only been really making content for two or three but like that's like a total uh profit across that whole time and that's when you can consider you know my uh multi-channel network takes a cut of it um, you know, YouTube's uh, estimated things that they give you in the oh, analytics. Yeah, I can't believe you're still on that that network. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, 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 well, that's the thing. It's like I haven't bothered looking for somewhere better because I, I just don't care mm. about the money. What bothers is more about the copyright system is the second my video gets copyrighted, I'm sure, I, I, I'm, I'm not certain and I can't prove it. I don't know if anyone else has covered this. But I'm sure it gets lower in the analytics, and my views have just been absolutely strangled. And it's like oh, I'm yeah, not I've bothered. heard about that too. But it's also really hard to tell because you've been gone so long. So it would be natural that your views would be pretty low. How how bad are your views right now, anyways? It depends on the video. So I'll just I'll just very quickly look. So so black panther's doing pretty good at 4000 50 shades actually got the most of me last three reviews with 7000 um it over it actually overtook defense of last jedi which was you know um it's been out the longest but that you cannot put that down to being a a, a comeback video but if you look um at my video manager i'll just saw it by like most popular it's like a weird dip like the the, the there's no consistency so if i go on most viewed hang on uh, Sorry, but <laughs> doing YouTube analytics, brilliant. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know. So, so my, how much were the old ones, anyways? Well, my top four videos are all around about the 100,000 view mark. And this is when I was doing regular uploads. This was back in, so Why It's Awesome Bojack Horseman, 90,000, and that was in 2015. Why It's Awesome Rick and Morty, 109,000, that was in 2015. And then we well, do. yeah, that's a lot of time for them to accrue a lot of views, obviously. Yeah, but they had those surges instantly. So, like, Batman vs. Superman... Well, but they, would... they've only been adding to it. Yeah, true, true. But, like, Batman vs. Superman, for example, had 100,000 views in its first couple of days. And that was in wow, 2016. And now it's only on 138,000. Which, yeah, you will see dip off and you will see slow down. But, like, I do feel like my views have been suffocated because, like, as you scroll down... My top four are like a hundred thousand. Then there's a massive dip to like half that, 
and all my videos after that are like fifty thousand. And oh, now those like, are just viral videos, though. You can't like yeah, that's, you I can't mean, say that that's your your basic. Yeah, that's not your baseline. It's just well, my baseline. You getting lucky, I my guess. My baseline when I was regular seemed to be around the. It's it's Even impossible though, to say. It, it's it's probably it's yeah it's definitely well deserved, but it's still. Yeah. It's still just the, the lottery of getting yeah, viral or but, not. Yeah, but if you look at my baseline, so this this is when I'm uploading regularly. Pixels, 50,000. Terminator, uh, sorry, Pixels, 40,000. Terminator, 40,000. Deadly Premonition, which was way back, 40,000. So all my sort of baselines are around about the 40,000 mark. But as it goes, as it gets later, even though I'm uploading more regularly, the views like dip and dip and dip. So, you know, if you look, if you look at 2015, it was all 40,000s. If you look at 2017, it's all 20 to 25,000s. And it's like, there's definitely been like a decrease despite, and it's weird because my subscribers are going up, but my views well, are going the, the down. Th the thing is that like, it, it really does keep getting views the longer it's there because yeah. Totally. Like after a year, it's like this came out a year ago from the creator that you've just viewed earlier. Yeah. Are, are you interested in that one? It's an anniversary video. <laughs> stuff like that. It's it does stuff like that a lot where it just it's just in the algorithm and it'll get views eventually. Especially people who binge your content, they're gonna go through all of it eventually. Mm -hmm. No, I get. I, I do get that. I do get that. But even even when I consider those, it does still feel like it's getting like slowly strangled. Like, um, I well, mean, you're doing it not to be rude here, but you're definitely doing it wrong by taking a year long break from it. This is like, uh, uh, well, not is it a year? I don't no, know. No, it's much, much, much less than a year. Oh, um, so, me, I guess. Wait, yeah, hang did on. Did you actually do it in August? Is that why? No, that's not the name. Hang on. It's <laughs> I, I, I filmed, I filmed the August Club in August, but uh, oh, no, wow, so last, you did. Brilliant. So, my last <laughs> upload, uh, I'm de uh, don't get us wrong, the break definitely doesn't help, but even when you look at the videos before the break, some of them have just like really like tanked um, oh, no. in terms of strangles. So that's that's what, more what I'm on about. I'm not on about the after the break stuff. I'm only on about before the break. Um, but yeah, so oh, the, last, the last upload I did before the break was uh, middle of July. And then I did a few more in September. So that's only two months, June, July, August. yeah, two months, two months later, I did a few more, and then, and then, yeah, oh, and then not again till January, which is a significant, significant break, um, and I wish, if, to, to be honest, if, if it was up to me, I would have had no break, but it was just impossible to find the time to do everything I needed to do. I would think so, yeah, it's pretty crazy that you made a whole movie, and then, well, I guess the whole short film yeah. in this in this time, it probably takes like a a whole team of people normally. Yeah. Uh, well, I was I was quite lucky in that um, a lot of the people I worked with kind of just fucking brought that air game. You know, there was like a lot of the people I worked with I'd, I'd literally never met before, and that's not just cast. Like some of the crew were just people in my uni class who I met on the uni course, and and normally there's that whole thing kind of thing where people say like. Oh, you know, you can never trust people doing group work, but this uh, this just worked out lovely. Oh, nice. That's pretty good, I guess. There's always this risk when you hire someone new that they'll be terrible or they'll be great. You never know. There was def <laughs> there was definitely people I could have got on that had no clue what they were doing. I was just very careful in in who, you know, who who I sort of worked with. You know, you gotta and, and as mean and cynical as that sounds, like you've you've got to sort of if you want something done well you have to you know work with people who can do it well rather than you know have to carry everybody else you know oh yeah definitely so it's, uh, it's obvious that everyone needs their talent if they're gonna make it and then you just have all the the really good people working together making uh, all find, the best content hopefully. Uh, yeah hopefully i honestly found that um it was more uh work ethic that played a part in it because there was people who, there was people who I would say were talented, who I I didn't uh, get to work on my film because they were very unreliable people, and then there was people I would say that weren't talented. I mean, some of the some of the lads I had on my film had never worked um, 
to do with media at all. Like, but they were still putting in, you know, 23 hour work days sometimes. And I was like, like, like my mate Michael, for example, mate, I have these in, you'll see him in the credits, he, Michael Curlin. He, uh, he'd never done anything media at college. He's, he's only sort of credit, um, in terms of like, Filmmaking was uh, he did a fan edit of Gurren Lagan that merged both the uh, movie and the series, um, but that was kind of it. You know, he was he was just somebody who was like wanted to get involved with these things, but had has never done it before. But I just knew I had the ability to rely on him to show up and put the effort in, and I valued that a lot more than like actual raw talent. And he's like. I would say, you know, he's, he's he's become quite capable, even though when he first, you know, arrived on, like, the first shoot, he, he, he admitted himself he had no idea what he was doing. By the end of it, he was quite capable, and he's, you know, he's starting to get into it himself, and uh, I prefer seeing that to, you know, somebody who's got a degree in whatever, you know, like, sound or something who just falls asleep on set, you know? Because that was an issue for other groups, um, people... Literally falling asleep on set. Oh yeah. my god! I don't, I don't want to name names. Um, not that anyone. <laughs> oh my would god! Know it them. actually happened. Yeah. Jesus. Not that I don't want to name names. Uh, not that anyone would know them, but like you know, just in case someone listens to this. But uh, I mean, if if they do listen to it, nobody on my set. That did not happen on my set. Um, but I know like other because obviously I was on the uni course and other people were like making their own films and stuff. And I know a lot of people had problems with just people not turning up or people you know i don't i don't want to be too specific because i know i have a lot of these people on facebook and <laughs> oh, uh, <no. laughs> and they they watch uh, my videos from time to time so I'll, I'll 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 shut up before i like dig my own grave but yeah i right, filmmaking's a crazy business man um, even at a independent level it's just mental oh man i'm so terrible with work ethic to be honest just just early, I was taking off like a whole whole five days to play uh, a game that I didn't even like because I really want to make a, a a game review about how how terrible it is. But is, it was just well, is that not work ethic in itself though? Like I don't have to do the YouTube. Well, videos, not really, because the YouTube work. stuff is uh, it's just a hobby for me, I guess. But also, it's it's not even a smart thing to do because people aren't gonna enjoy me shitting over this highly <laughs> popular game at all. So. I remember really, people really, really didn't insane. like when you uh, criti- criticized Enter the Gungeon. So yeah, well, I guess I also made the additional mistake <laughs> there of, of posting it on their subreddit. So yeah. that was obviously very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I oh, think, that I game think, sucks as well, Jesus. <laughs> I, I think you had some valid points um, in that video. And, and no, I enjoy that you. game, you know. <laughs> Oh, you do? Yeah, but like I think I think you made some like valid valid points, um, but yeah, people people don't, uh, and I think this is uh, this if we're if we're gonna keep it sort of centered on like YouTube and that I think um, that's a, a big problem for me as as well, especially with like commenters, people just don't like having their opinions challenged, like you know. Um, I've I've had people I've had people this is this is this is incredible this is why this, I, this this feeds really well into the next podcast we're on about challenging our opinions on Black <laughs> Panther yeah, what definitely. what a great time <laughs> um it, just for clarity by the way I know you were like saying oh, I literally said it was a ten thousand ten out of ten it's I know not. I know that's a joke <laughs> yeah, it's not it's like a <laughs> seven and a half eight but I do think that's a good score. Um, well, not not according to the Rotten Tomatoes, it is. Uh, that's, that's a whole different thing. Um, but yeah, well, I guess in that case, we, it, it may be less overrated than I thought. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't think it's a ten out of ten. Oh no, no, it is absolutely not a ten out of ten. It's just I don't give scores <laughs> because I think it's pointless anyway. Like I just say whether I like the film or not and make arguments. As it's to why not I like pointless, it. really, because. The score is just how much you like it, don't you yeah, see? Yeah, but everybody's scoring system's completely different, so it doesn't make any sense. Like, so for example... Like, well, it just has to be consistent with itself. It doesn't have... To, don't even worry about Rotten Tomatoes or anything, no, no, or Metacritic. But I, mean, like, but I mean, like, I'll say... Like, if I say something like, Black Panther is a 7 out of 10, right? 
And people yep. people only look at the, there's, there's people do this thing where they only look at the scores. They don't care what's said before it, but they only look at the scores. Now, when I say Black Panther is a 7 out of 10... Well, that I is the point that. of the score, then, that the, the score accumulates to your entire opinion of the movie. Which, but I think that's a dumb thing, because I think, like, well, how can you accumulate subjectivity in terms of, like, points? There's no, like, numerical system. What are you talking system. about? <laughs> the whole thing you're doing is accumulating subjectivity in your review. No, no, you're gathering your thoughts, but you're not, like, you're not saying, like, well, this CG was spotty, so that's worth minus 0.5. <laughs> uh, however, this scene was a positive action scene, so that's worth plus 1.1. <laughs> like, uh, that's what I don't get when you put numerical values. Uh, you, you, just, you, you just do the, the cinema sense. You just, you just yell ding and, and <laughs> yeah, loud out ding, in the movie cinema ding, every time. Like <laughs> But yeah, so like this is this is this is why I don't do scores because if I say Black Panther is a seven out of ten, which I probably think if I had to give it a numerical score, I'd say it's seven to eight, right? People will hear that score, and what I mean by that score is Black Panther is a really good superhero movie, and I enjoyed it immensely. What they'll hear is why is it not a nine out of ten? Why is it not a ten out of ten? This is ridiculous. Or they'll hear. Eh, this film was like a two at best. Like this, and and that's that's why I don't. <laughs> oh no. But well, it, that I guess that's a reason. But then you say that it's it's just not gonna work because of subjectivity, and I I don't see that being a valid criticism of the point system because you can just say how much you enjoyed it and how much you want to see it again but, and how but much. That doesn't even work for me because there's other films where I'll go, you know, if I think if someone asks us to give a numerical value, I'll go, oh, well, that film was an 8 out of 10. And then they'll go, oh, but you you said that film was an 8 out of 10. Did you not enjoy this more? And I'll be like, yeah. And it's like, well, so why is it not a 9? It's like, because it's not. And they, it, I can't <laughs> articulate and explain that. Like I don't. Well, so you've liked them both the same. But I don't. Like, the, 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 if this is well, the why thing. did you give them the same score then? No, so so there, there'll be like <laughs> say there's like five films right and i might yeah. think all five of them are seven out of ten like that doesn't mean i think they're all equally as good as each other but like then i'm like okay well you know if i go by the numerical point system then that means the one i least enjoyed might get knocked down to a six so that i can say well that's a six and these are sevens but then i might look at that that film and be like well no because I still enjoyed it, and I think six is too harsh a score for it, and that's I just I just do not like score systems at all. Like I, I tend to massively ignore it. them. <laughs> it's it's all your perfectionism, isn't it? That's the problem. Yeah, you, know, you couldn't stand stand that one that a movie could be one point off on your point system, eh? I mean, maybe it is that. Maybe it's like a a a. a, a, a it, funny enough, I'm actually um I'm actually being um tested at the moment for autism oh, no. <laughs> so maybe it's something to do with that um because it's pretty high functioning then at least <laughs> oh yeah 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 um the think if if anything it'll be um uh asperger's uh i mean are, are you are, is this is this interesting subject matter is this something you want we want to talk about a yes bit? yes good. okay so teach us about your your psychological shortcomings <laughs> sure <laughs> So what happened, right? Was uh oh boy, is he gonna have autism? Is is he gonna not? We had a whole podcast for two hours, so I'm gonna cut it here in half so you can find out about the autism in the next episode about Geeky Glasses TV. Oh my God, it's a whole episode about autism. Could you imagine? Well, you won't have to, cause it'll come out pretty soon. Stay tuned.